climbed everything. So we had to put her in gymnastics so she'd learn to fall. Otherwise, she was going to hurt herself. At just three years old, Katie discovered her lifelong passion watching the 1984 Olympics. Oh, boy. Yes! She has done the best ball of her life! Mary Lou Retton got her perfect 10. She bagged and bagged and bagged to go to gymnastics. And she chased that dream training under one of the best in the world. She's a fighter, she, was, she would work for everything she had. She had talent, of course, but she worked her butt off to maximize everything she had. Fast forward to her junior year in high school. No longer a three-year-old with just a dream, Katie is set to take the stage at regionals, recruitment week for college coaches. So that was the biggest meet of her life. And the night before we got the call that she had straight armed a, a ball and to probably torn the ligament in her arm. I was doing a release move on bars, which is where you let go of the, the high bar, you do a flip, you catch it again. Well, I didn't catch it again and I ended up falling and um, putting my, sticking my arm out to catch me. And that's when everything went pop. Well, you know, the, the initial injury wasn't, wasn't career-ending. This particular injury required a surgery, and then after, after that point, um, there was some medical mix-ups, and that's what ended her career more than anything else. I knew in my, my gut that something was really, really wrong because my fingers were just like, it was like hitting your funny bone, but constant, like tingles all the time, and um, a lot of nerve pain and then I couldn't feel half my hand and it just didn't seem right. During Katie's reconstructive surgery, doctors accidentally removed the median nerve in her left arm and attached it to her elbow, forcing her back into surgery three more times and onto a longer rehabilitation period. That was devastating. She dealt with it, I mean, like she does with everything in life and you know that's a tribute to her character. Katie wasn't going to give up her dream that easily and sure enough, the letter came. Kathy Clay, just say, give her credit at Michigan State University, said that she had earned the right to be, at least walk on her team. She spent her freshman year at MSU working with team doctors and trainers, but never getting a shot to compete. By the end of the year, it became clear that it, I needed more surgery and it just wasn't going to happen. So um, I ended up talking to Kathy, the coach, who is an amazing support system, and we both decided it was for the best that I retire from gymnastics and move on with my life. Ten years later, a kindergarten teacher with a newfound passion for running, she found out it wasn't that simple. I started to notice I had a lot of stomach problems and back pain. With three herniated discs, Katie stopped exercising in hopes that it would boost her recovery. It ended up making everything worse. I started to have dislocations and subluxations with my ribs. Um, that's when the muscles in my neck got weak, so I couldn't hold my head up and I needed a neck brace. But those who weren't familiar with Katie's daily struggles had no idea. I started to lose weight and people would say, you know, you look great and our society, you know, when you lose weight, that's like a good thing. But I was having all these problems, I was crawling from room to room, not knowing why, why I couldn't stand up. When things did not show signs of getting any better, she was forced to stop teaching and hunt for answers in this medical mystery. There are many times that MS was brought up. Hoping. Muscular dystrophy. Waiting. ALS. And worrying. I was starting to feel hopeless that there wasn't going to be a doctor that would put the pieces together. Katie's combination of symptoms baffled doctors. Some looked at her and didn't think there was anything truly wrong with her health, except maybe psychologically. A lot of times I would get depression scales handed to me. After two years, Katie found out she suffered from a rare genetic disease. Like your body comes unglued. Mm -hmm. And so being active my whole life, my muscles were always kept strong. So they did, were doing the work that my connective tissue was not doing and holding my body together. There is no road to recovery for Katie, 
Instead, every day is a series of events to help her live life to the fullest, and it all starts with keeping her muscles strong. And if you think of a door that has a loose hinge, over time what happens is that things start to break down, and you have to find a way to be able to seat that door and seat that hinge so that, so that things can move more smoothly and stuff, if at all possible. Katie has to perform rehabilitation stretches and exercises four to five times a week, whether it's at Michigan State's campus clinic, lift, on the floor, okay. or at home. All right. It's because of her rigorous routine that she was able to return teaching her kindergarten class at Wexford Montessori. Good morning. Even if it's just for a half of a day. Any of Katie's co-workers will tell you that her return has a positive impact on each of her students. She's always willing to go that extra mile, take time with each individual child and really nourish their needs. Um, she's awesome at helping them on their journey towards you know who they're going to become. You have cookie on your face. There are days the reality of her condition tests Katie's selfless and proactive approach to her job. Commonly paired with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, Katie also suffers from postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, also referred to as POTS. It's a disorder that severely impairs vascular functions, restricting blood flow to the brain and pooling in the legs and feet when she stands up. Days when um, things are flaring up on her, she's a little bit more tired, but she always you know, before the kids come in, she'll get her get self geared up and she'll say, you know, I didn't sleep last night or I'm having a rough morning. It's important for them to know that just because I look beautiful and strong doesn't mean inside that I am, but I'm still going to give you everything that I've got and I'm really going to do my best for you because she does care about those kids. Once the clock strikes noon, Miss Katie heads home for her afternoon nap. It's a vital part of her day in order for her to be fully functional in the evening especially when it comes to her uncharted endeavor. Enter the Life as a Zebra Foundation, a nonprofit organization that aims to promote awareness of invisible illnesses like EDS and raise money for research. But it wasn't her own health problems that inspired her. It was watching her youngest sister, her best friend, go through something much worse in a hospital on Christmas. That night, my mom called. Um, Allie in the middle of the night had a seizure and they thought she had brain damage and they didn't know if, if she would make it. And they told my mom and dad, they called them in the middle of the night and said that they may need to say their goodbyes. Ali Dama pulled through without suffering long-term brain damage, but she was diagnosed with vasculitis, another so-called invisible illness that had many doctors looking in all the wrong places for answers. Doctors did blood work and nothing was that abnormal. So they just said, you probably have a virus or I don't know, just some kind of flu that's going around. Just wait it out, it should go away. But it didn't. And that's how the Sisters of Survival came up with the foundation's name. All right, love you, bye. In medical school, medical students are taught, if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. Meaning, think the most common ailment, not the out of the box rare disease or ailment. And it turned out that Allie and I were both zebras and doctors were thinking horses the whole time. The foundation is now into its fourth month and with the help of a dedicated board, it's your call. It will host its first benefit concert featuring Boston singer-songwriter Chris Trapper who says he was impressed and inspired by Katie's story. Well, I think it's important to, to realize that everybody goes through the, their own struggle and so when you share yours, I think it makes p people feel less alone. But Chris is just part of the evening. Katie has worked tirelessly to find sponsorships for the benefit concert. But you could say she struck gold when she met with her old gymnastics coach. I didn't even get halfway through the, um, the packet and it wasn't even a no-brainer that he would sponsor and become a titanium, spon titanium sponsor of $1,000. It blows me away and it's really special. At the silent auction, one lucky bidder will get to take home an American flag signed by the 2012 Women's Gold Medal Olympic Gymnastics team and Coach Guttert himself. That's the least I could do. Katie's hard work to obtain sponsors for the foundation benefit is paying off, but for the event to really take off, she's going to need a little help. Good. Some white in these.
The night before the Life as a Zebra's first benefit, Katie and Allie spend the evening making the final preparations, but all week Katie battled POTS induced anxiety and sleeplessness. I needed her calming <laughs> sense here, I think. Um, that would have helped. Allie's homecoming is just as important for Katie as it is for the benefit. It's been really helpful to have her here. She's able to help wrap up loose ends. Plus, she's very um, calm. Um, I like it in the cup. So she's been bringing me down a level when I like get very anxious and, and feel like it's not gonna get all done. I don't know. <laughs> Allie's been that calming force for me. Just set them out in the baskets and I'll fix them. We kind of level each other out. I don't know, Laura Put one and Jen. In and they can exchange it if they want to. Let's just do all mediums. I feel like I'm kind of walking in in the middle of something, even though I've had a big hand in it and I've done everything I can from afar. Allie has much to catch up on in a short amount of time, but a brief board meeting at the Kellogg Center just hours before the event is all she'll have. Planning this benefit has been a long and challenging journey. It's had its ups and downs. All the big things have happened in this last month. For most of which, Allie has been living in Virginia, finishing up her master's degree in science and occupational therapy. It's been a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. Though she's only been in town for two days, Allie doesn't show any trace of intimidation. Despite Katie's growing anxiety. I just know Katie so well, and I know her symptoms and what she struggles with on a daily basis. My body is so tired, but my mind won't stop. She doesn't always like to shut down and take that time, but. It, I think it's important for someone to remind her, and today it just happened to be me, to tell her to keep back and put her feet up and rest for a little bit before this evening. I just have to take a time out and kind of give up the control and let other people take over and set up. That's when Allie takes the reins. The event is only three hours away and setup has just begun. But this isn't a one zebra effort. There's a herd of helpers looking to earn their stripes by putting their best hoof forward. Are those the centerpieces? The banquet hall is filled with items the Life as a Zebra Foundation has gathered for their silent auction. They received nearly double the donations than last year's Invisible Illness Awareness Benefit, which Katie and Allie helped organize as well. But now that this year's event is entirely in the hands of the newly established nonprofit, the Life as a Zebra Foundation is determined to show everyone that they aren't horsing around. These invisible illnesses are rare, but they're more common than people realize. The foundation brought in Chris Trapper to share the statement as the headliner for the benefit. Like they say, a lot of these illnesses, you, you can't see them. You see somebody who at, at first glance looks, you know, perfect. It, and then you see their hand like bends back to, to their arm and stuff. And, and, and it's actually more common that, than we know, but it just gets misdiagnosed all the time. Or, or not even looked at. The Boston musician says he is deeply moved by the impact his music has had on the Dama sisters, and it brings him back to the true reason he loves music. If there's ever a song has the, just, just moved somebody in a real way, it's a beautiful thing, and that's, that's kind of why you do it, is because you think when you're writing a song that you'll eventually have a shared experience with somebody on some level. Katie and Allie aim to share their experience tonight as over 200 people gathered at the Kellogg Center to hear their story. I cannot tell you the amount of confused, surprised, or even angry looks I've received on the days when I've been forced to use my handicap sticker or wheelchair. I realize that I cannot expect people to just know if I don't try to explain myself and what I go through. This is where awareness comes into play. Awareness to understand that no matter how normal someone appears, they may have stripes of their own on the inside, whether they realize it or not. People are listening to this message, and tonight made that evident, bringing in just under $27,000 towards invisible illness awareness and research. The Life as a Zebra Foundation has a destiny to help so many confused victims of invisible illnesses find answers, thanks to an optimistic and selfless heart and a person that would literally bend over backwards for you. Drink cinema in the air. We are the ones who are never afraid. We need no rehearsal to dance. We're well aware this may be our last chance. So bring on the avalanche. Bring on the avalanche.